Welcome back. Cracking down on soaring drug prices, the Trump administration rolling out a new rule requiring pharmaceutical companies to disclose the list prices of medicines on TV commercials. Health and Human Services Secretary Alex Azar explaining how patients will benefit from this new rule on special report on Fox News last night. Whether it's a $50 drug or a $5,000 drug, they can factor that into the discussion they're going to have with their doctors. The president said in May he wanted to bring this kind of transparency and accountability to the drug industry so that he could bring drug prices down. He's delivering on that today. Joining me right now is former Cleveland Clinic CEO, Dr. Toby Cosgrove, and it's great to see you, Toby. Thank you so much for being well, here. Well, nice to have you, Maria. What, what do you think about this? Putting the price of drugs on TV ads is going to be real enlightening, real quick. Well, I think people will begin to realize the incredible cost of drugs. That's our highest uh, growing cost for health care that we're uh, seeing right now. And, you know, we talk about all the problems that with drugs that are associated, uh, and why should we not also talk about the price? We talk about the price of cars. We talk about the uh, price of all kinds of things, transparency. Why not have it? Yeah, I mean, but, but if you're talking about life saving drugs, I mean, cancer medications, these drugs can go up to $180,000, $200,000 a year. Exactly. So, now, I mean, is that going to be enough, that transparency? Is that going to be enough, do you think, to, I don't know, embarrass pharma companies to bring prices down? I, I think it will have some effect, and I think also that we need to look at other things that, where we can begin to have a market affect the price of drugs. Uh, if, quite frankly, in the United States, we pay much higher uh, costs for drugs than any place else in the world, and why should we not get the same drugs uh, being able to import them? Why should we not be able to negotiate uh, for the price of drugs uh, for Medicare patients? I mean, really, uh, this has uh, come to the point where we need to be uh, competitive. It makes a lot of sense, actually. Here we are in open enrollment period. What's mm -hmm. your take in terms of costs now? Yesterday we did the story that Obamacare premiums actually are expected to be down next year, but it's not all that much. Yeah, they're going to be down about 1.5 percent, right, and, so and it varies state to state. Some states they're up 20 percent, some oh. states they're down 20 percent, <laughs> but the average across the, the 39 states is down about 1.5 percent. Oh, I didn't realize that. Some states are up 20 percent, so then I take it back. It's not actually going down. Let me let me ask you about really my favorite part. Of, of our conversation, that is advances in technology. You and I have spoken about the innovation in, in technology a lot. You are now an advisor to Google. Yes. That in and of itself, I think, is so great that Google is spending the resources on healthcare expertise. You know, I think we're seeing increasing interest amongst the high tech companies uh, around healthcare, whether it be Apple with their watches and whether it be Microsoft for the things that they're doing or Amazon uh, and Google as, as well. Interestingly, uh, we having an explosion in healthcare, which is one, a problem and be an opportunity. The problem is that the total amount of knowledge in healthcare is doubling every 73 days. That's an incredible stat. You told me this last night. Healthcare data doubling every 73 days. It's huge. But think, think about what we got. We have uh, 5,600 journals putting out 800,000 articles a year. No doctor can possibly keep up with that. Uh, there's more information in one mammogram than there is in the New York City phone book. Uh, you have the, wow. you have uh, increasing amounts of information from genomics, which is now being part of clinical care, particularly for cancer. All of these things are having a huge amount of data. Now that's a problem for us to handle, and so we're going to need ways to do that. Probably going to have to go to the cloud for people to manage all this data. This and that that becomes the opportunity. So all of this data being forced onto the cloud gives you an opportunity to apply machine learning. Exactly. Well, on top of that, it also gives you interoperability. The, the fact that then all these companies have now come together at the White House and said that they will uh, once the information is in the cloud, they will share it and that gives you interoperability, which we did not get when we uh, have Epic and Cerner and all the electronic medical records. We've never been able to get that interoperability. But going to the cloud gives you an additional advantage. As you point out, the other opportunity is when you have this huge amount of data is to apply AI and machine learning to it, and we're going to find things we never expected before. Think about how much time and effort and money it costs to do a drug trial. We quite likely could foreshorten that by really a sophisticated analysis wow. and uh, reduce the cost and the time to get a drug to 
uh, the public. So what I think I hear you saying is the fact that all this data is being moved to the cloud, giving us an opportunity to do machine learning, apply machine learning there, it will help outcomes. Oh, I think it definitely will help outcomes. It should improve the quality. It should reduce the cost uh, and, and help with the efficiency of how we deliver health care. That's really important uh, opportunity for us. That's incredible. Now, a moment ago during the commercial break, we were talking about what MIT is doing. Uh, tell us about that. Even MIT is focused on uh, machine learning. Learning and AI. Well, I think you just saw that uh, MIT now realizes that AI is uh, part of the future. They talk about being bilingual. You have to be able to talk con computer ease, uh, AI, and also a language. And so this is the new language of science. And MIT is now building a whole new campus that's going to be centered around AI and devoting a billion dollars to developing that. And I think it's a symbol of where we're headed and the opportunity that this presents for us. All of this information uh, hasn't already empowered us. We're living longer. So when you say it's actually moving, it will move the needle on outcomes, it's going to enable us to be healthier for longer. I think it will. And I think the most important thing is not only do we live longer, but we live healthier. Right. Uh, and we have to understand those factors which are influencing our long-term life. And you and I have talked in the past about the importance of taking care of yourself, and uh, that is becoming increasingly apparent. Uh, genomics is going to, uh, and uh, is having a major part to play in here. We're understanding about the influence of your gut flora and, and how that uh, influences uh, your metabolism of uh, your food, et cetera. All that very important stuff and huge numbers associated with it we've got to manage. Tell me about genomics related to cancer because we're seeing real advances yeah. there as well, right? Yeah, and so uh, we're now uh, sequencing the cancer itself. And so you can direct a drug particularly at the, uh, the, the, the type of cancer that you have. And so no longer is it just sort of a shotgun. We'll try something and see if it works. We're actually directing uh, the therapy towards that particular genome in the cancer. So um, you're seeing uh, better cures. You're seeing less morbidity in, uh, around the, the therapy. Uh, and it should be more directed, That's more incredible. personalized. Well, what, what else do we need to see from a policy? standpoint to keep all of this on track. I mean, I know that health care is a big issue coming into the midterm elections. Yeah. People are recognizing this. We're already at a great point in terms of technology, AI, machine learning, genomics. What needs to be done from a policy standpoint? Well, I think one of the things that people recognize now is this is probably the most important issue uh, for the election that's coming up. And it, uh, we have seen increasing support across the country for the ACA. Uh, it initially was not very popular. And now it's well into the 60 to 70 percent support in that. And pre existing conditions is where everybody believes, or not everybody, three quarters of people believe that we should have uh, support, uh, insurance for, with pre existing conditions. So that I think is going to eventually emerge as the new standard for health care insurance. And do you think people are aware of the technology advances going on, what's happening between technology and health care? I don't think people are aware of how fast this is going. This is moving fast. I, I mean, for example, just uh, let's take face transplants, uh, for example. Um, if you think about putting someone's entire face back on, including uh, hooking up arteries, nerves, arteries, veins, nerves, muscle, bone, uh, teeth, uh, eyelids, oh my uh, skin. Uh, and can you imagine the technology that's involved in that? And, and the Cleveland Clinic just did that. Uh, we just, it was a very inter interesting story in National Geographic this month about it. It's really amazing. But it, it brings together all of the things that you need to do, including tissue typing uh, and the transplantation issues. They're just amazing opportunities. Fascinating stuff. It's always a pleasure to see you. My pleasure. Thank you so much, Dr. Toby Cosgrove, for joining us there.